Okay, so we're gonna go over various or different types of uh, options for rigging when you're dealing with like a confined space, and particularly your basic manhole. So your standard equal-sided tripod or even a easel leg tripod where you're, you have a, a vertical entry going down a shaft. And there are a bunch of ways to do it, a bunch of ways to rig it. I'm gonna cover five different ways today. And we're gonna start off with my preference in general, because conditions are gonna di dictate how exactly you rig this, but in general, my top five starting from most preferred and easiest fall all the way down to the least preferred. If you look around, let's pan the camera around just the, the footprint, just so you can see just how kind of tight our working space is. You can see the edges of where our, uh, our vortex legs are. We had to get creative with securing these feet down by using uh, Fifi hooks or those CMC claws to try to like lash the feet down. I didn't want to hobble the legs together because we have this crate here that gets in the way. Yeah, it was a little bit of a challenge. Let's look at our our final leg here going down. This leg ideally, we started off putting it here, but it didn't give us the space we needed to put in a winch. And I really wanted to get a winch in here because that's going to be my go-to. That's like my top uh, first choice when it comes to rigging options. So our winch is extended all the way to the ground. It's mounted to the actual leg of the tripod. And what that means for us in terms of hauling efficiency, well, we only need one hauler on a drill. There is an inherent gear ratio, either two to one or six to one, depending on which way the Harkin winch spins. And then the drill just uh, on top of that. We're only lifting uh, like a single person load at a time out of this manhole. So we don't need any mechanical advantage in front of the winch. We can just use it direct. And we want to put it on the actual uh, compression member, one of the legs of our tripod, because if you follow me up to the, to the head here, whatever we're using to actually haul, if the haul device is connected to any portion of this frame, the resultant will therefore be the actual loaded line, this loaded line right here. So our resultant is going straight down. And that's what I want to do every time. So that's my first number one go-to, plus less people and it's a single line so there's not a lot of clutter in here so it gives me all the benefits really and none of the downsides to having to worry about all these resultant forces and manpower i did guy this vortex head in two directions and that's for some rigging that's going to happen later on because if you have the time always consider doing some sort of back tie guying because inevitably what happens is when this when the load gets up, somebody grabs the load and they pull them outside and, and then the result in force all of a sudden everything starts to change and then that's when you can start to risk tipping your tripod over. So it always happens or, or there's always a risk, there's always something that goes for that if you leave it unchecked. So given the time, I'm on the front end to do this will save us on the back end from having to stop and make these little corrections that we should have done to begin with all along. Uh, these Kootenay pulleys that are right here, if you want to zoom in on these. These are for when we're doing confined space with bundled airlines and comm lines. What's gonna happen is uh, our rescuers are gonna go in and they're gonna feed the bundle package through here and it routes down the space. So there's, we eliminate these friction points with line management, airline and communication line management. This just makes it really easy to feed that stuff down into the space for our rescuers. So big not passing pulleys, Kootenay pulleys are great for that application. Let's talk about our belays before we get into the winch itself. So right here, this is a belay option. It's easy, it's fast, it's connected directly to the head. If there's a failure, uh, the ASAP will catch and the impact force goes directly to the head and through the legs of the compression member. And that's okay, this vortex is strong enough, especially for a single person failure, it can handle that. Uh, this isn't like the belay competency drop test. We aren't m mimicking those situations or those forces. It's, it's, that's not what we're doing. So uh, this is perfectly acceptable and it's easy, it's fast. We can also just put a static line in here and put an ASAP on our rescuer. That would be an independent self belay. This is our independent team belay. So a bunch of different ways we can do that. The third option for belaying, if you pan the camera down to my feet down here, um, we can easily just belay off to the side over somewhere else and have the rope running uh, on edge protection as well. So all easy, practical options. So it really doesn't matter what you do. In this case, it's more user preference. We're gonna assume that our, uh, our rescuer is down and the first thing that's gonna come up is gonna be the victim that's packaged. So go ahead and haul up, Steve. Are you ready, Young? Yeah. Okay, so you can see that our spec pack is coming up. The packaging device of choice is gonna be the spec pack for me every time because it's lower profile. So keep coming up. Young, you're coming up too with it, right? Okay, stop. Okay, so right here we had excess line and so instead of taking the terminal end of our line hooking into our victim 
hauling them up and then getting our victim out and then dropping it uh, an empty line back down for the rescuer, we save ourselves some time by putting a rope grab onto the line right here and then rigging our victim on. We don't have enough people here today, so like if this was an actual person, we would take them out of our system and then get rid of our prusik or our rope grab. It could be a rescue center or whatever. And now the beauty of this is that we still have the line below that our rescuer's on and they're ready to come up. We don't have to drop this down and change over and then bring them back up. So we can just keep hauling up and bring our rescuer up. So still ready on? Ready, ready Steve? Okay, ready let's go main. up. So we're going up on main. And as we go up on main, we're gonna tend a delay for our ASAP. And right now everything is really streamlined. That We don't have the airlines, the, uh, the comm lines. We don't have a lot of people up here, but normally if this is a real op, this area, this workspace would be very, very cluttered. And that's why I want to have as few lines going into this hole as possible. We also don't have any ventilation or any like heating elements or anything like that. So there's, the duct work's not here either. So all that stuff takes up space. So the fewer lines that I, that I have going to my space, the better. Okay, almost there. Four more feet, three more feet. Keep going. One more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Stop. You get there, Jan? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so that's just a fast way to do it. Our rescuer is out of the space. We didn't have to throw in an excess line. We saved ourselves some time. Do you want to go down? Okay, give us slack on the main. So again, yeah, I, I prefer the spec pack over like a sked or any litter, rigid litter just because of the inherent height constraints that we're, we're dealing with. We want to get this uh, tripod as high as we can, but within reason, within reach. Uh, the higher we make a tripod, the weaker it is inherently, and the, we, we can't reach our connections. And inevitably, every time, pretty much, we're always making connections. So the golden rule is uh, just have it so that the, your tallest person that's going to be up here can reach all the connections. And we want to keep the amount of gear, if possible, to, to a minimum to, to keep our profile small. The spec pack is great because conditions depending, like our victim, or our patient's legs can be manipulated. So we don't necessarily have to get the entire thing out of the space. We just need to get most of it and we can kind of cradle the legs unless there's some sort of lower leg injury. That's a different story. But yeah, our go-to is gonna be the spec pack. My, my second preference, so first was the winch. The second preference here is gonna be what we have. We've, we've converted our tripod into an anchor frame by hard tying a terminal end of the working line to the head. And this line is now static. And then we create an inherent uh, two to one mechanical advantage system for our rescue package. And then we can build whatever other mechanical advantage we need once it passes through our directional and it continues on out in the space behind me out here. We're gonna put a haul field way out there. That changes our resultants quite a bit. It's, it's a little bit different from the winch. Our resultant is no longer straight down. But it also, it, it's not quite bisecting this pulley here because we still have a resultant going this way through this directional. So you could just assume that maybe our resultant is kind of a little bit more inwards. However, just like when we're kind of doing our planning, we just assume that 50% is like our, our D rating on a, on a knot, regardless of the knot type. I'm just gonna assume that my resultant is still bisecting that pulley just to be safe. And because I'm gonna assume that my resultant bisects this pulley, my forces are, are kind of going over to the side and they wanna kind of tip this tripod towards me. So whenever we rig this way, I always want a guy to the opposite direction of where my pulling resultant is. In this case, this orange power cord uh, is a non-working three to one back tie going in the opposite direction. And you can kind of pan the camera out where we have it fanned out all the way to our pipe anchor way out there. Um, So that's one thing to consider when you're doing this. I, I like to call this the quote unquote November or the N rig because of the way this, this looks. Like right here, it's kind of looks like an, the letter N. So inherent two to one, this line is static. I have to be careful about this, this material as it goes down to the space because just like a rope that doesn't move over an edge, give special consideration to this non-moving line, this section for uh, edge trauma or, or any uh, abrasion. That's the one caveat when you're, when you're rigging this way. If I can take advantage of something we call a butt block. A butt block is a pulley 
that we rig low within the footprint of the tripod. And so pan the camera down to make it flat. And if we can rig a butt block every time, if we can have that kind of thinking on the front end, butt blocks are awesome because now what I can do um, is I find some sort of anchor in the space and I attach a pulley and then it's just another directional. It's still going out to my uh, haul field. So if I have like a two to one or a three to one on top of this, it's a, it's a four a compound system, a four to one or a, or a six to one. But the resultant now doesn't quite matter a whole lot at all. I can do, I don't have to worry about so much back tying on the opposite end because this resultant here is now come, it's now more centered. And there's no way that this is going to get out of our footprint if we have a butt block kind of in here. And this can apply to all the other uh, uh, ringing options as well. So if we can take advantage of using a butt block every time, I'm going to do that. Um, so uh, just an awesome way to kind of uh, change your resultant forces in your favor when you're guying. This one's called the, the mic rig or the M rig. And the reason why we call it that is because if you look at what the shape looks like in here, this looks like the letter M, so hence the M rig. Very similar to the N rig, except the terminal tie off on our working line is not at the head. So this is no longer an anchor frame, it's, it's a true directional frame, uh, equal sided tripod. And we, we tie off the terminal end of our, our working line uh, off somewhere. In this case, we just piggybacked onto the anchor that our, our guy line was on. Uh, right there. So this is static and the same rules apply for being uh, cognizant of, of a non-moving uh, line as it goes to the space. We have to watch out for edge trauma, abrasion to the rope. So this part is static. It's still a two to one, but it's not really a two to one with a change of direction. It's a two to one with a, a double change of direction. So static changes the direction to a two to one to another change of direction. And our working part of it, where we're gonna put our uh, compound mechanical advantage system is on this side. Um, so very similar to the N rig, but not quite N, it's the M rig. Guying on the M rig, you want to guy both sides uh, in line with, with both lines coming out. And you could argue that, uh, no, you don't need to because the beauty of the M rig is that you have a resultant force going right here, but you have another resultant force that in theory, I mean, it's not going to be exact because there's friction loss, but in theory, you're going to have another resultant force mirroring exactly where this one comes out on the opposite side and we have two resultant forces doing this they cancel each other out and your resultant force is just straight down that's in theory however we've done a training and exercise where we thought everything was good we did not guide the head back and somebody came along or anybody and and uh they just kind of pull on one strand or the other and the second that they do that whether they're on the ground or wherever if they're just resting or just not paying attention or if they're just watching um once they do that, you start to shift your result without even realizing it, and then this thing starts to topple over. So the MR rig in theory is great, but in, in reality, you still want a back tie. You want two back ties that go to both your anchors where your, where your uh, main lines uh, are anchored to. So on, on this configuration, uh, if I was going to do a butt block, um, I can still do a butt block, but now I need two butt blocks because whatever I do on one side, if, if I bring this down into a butt block in the space, I've got to do the same thing to the other side to make it much more M-like, but I can't just do butt block on one side and leave the other side up because that my resultant force is not straight down anymore. This is my least favorite or my the last choice. Not to say it's a terrible idea, but in my opinion, this system has more cons than it does pros, so I'm going to collapse this up. And what this is, it is a pre-rigged, mecha simple mechanical advantage system. Specifically, a pre-rigged, simple 4 to 1 with a final change of direction mechanical advantage system. These are commonly known as set of 4s or jiggers. And what I don't like about this is that there are one, two, three, four strands. That's a lot of rope. And so we're limited in the depth that we can go on this. If I lower this out, well, if I'm only going 40 feet down, well, that's, you know, four times that in terms of rope. Yeah, so if I need to go like really long distances, like 100 feet into a, a, a space, I don't want all these strands. That's just very inefficient. Plus, the more strands I have and the longer uh, this distance is, inherently, like, what I see a lot is, is that the whole package, things start to get twisted up, and every, every time this rope touches, 
itself anywhere, that increases friction uh, pretty significantly. So I don't like it because of that. It eats up a lot of rope. It creates a lot of friction when it twists. Also, real estate is a precious commodity when we're actually doing an op with all the other stuff that goes into the space. And you're just adding all this material into that space and, and you're just opening up Pandora's box for this stuff to get caught on other things and, and other lines start to get intertwined uh, in, in your set of pores. So uh, not a fan. Uh, <laughs> one of the pros is it's pre-rigged. That means it's really easy to operate. So if you just want something really quick down and dirty, you just hook it up and you're good to go. So as far as setup time, it doesn't take much time at all. That's a plus. The other plus is, you know, you, you anchor it here, your tripod is an anchor frame and your resultants, for the most part, for the most part, they're all going straight down. However, uh, let's go revisit the con. And this happens a lot where you have an operator and not so critical when you're lowering something down, but when you're hauling a, a victim or a rescuer up, a lot of times our rescuers are standing outside of the footprint and they're hauling outside of the footprint too. And just that little resultant right here can affect the stability of the tripod. So the downside of this is I see a lot of uh, teams or a lot of people will revert to uh, using this and they set up the tripod and then they hobble the legs together, but that's it. They don't secure or independently lash the legs together to prevent this thing from moving. They don't secure the head from any tip, uh, tipping over, so they don't guide the head at all. And they think that they're they're safe, but even like a, you know, if you have like a, I don't know, let's just say you have 450 pounds or two kilonewtons that you're hauling on this, and e even though there's a bunch of resultants through here, this final result that I'm pulling outside of our footprint, it still has the potential to tip our tripod over and just mousetrap and collapse it, and then we we can consider that a catastrophic failure. So that's those are the reasons why I don't like using pre-rig system. Not to say that it's it sucks, it doesn't suck, it's just it has its place. It lures people in uh, to being uh, content with just a one shoe size fits all solution for your confined space, which it's not the case. It, it, it kind of pigeonholes people into thinking that this is this is it. This is what we're gonna do every time. And a lot of times like it it kind of it, it doesn't allow for uh, riggers to get creative in their rigging and to think critically about uh, the resultant forces, what what system is going to work the best in, in a given condition or scenario. I don't think I covered the standard just a single directional straight down, but that's similar to our in rig. That doesn't change. That's also on the table. I didn't show that, uh, but you can just go a single line into the space through directional out. Uh, the guiding rules apply in that case too. So those are all the kind of different rigging options for confined space, tripod going down. There you have it.